So we're going to keep today's session pretty interactive. We're keen to get your feedback um, around what is working well, where there's room for improvement, um, and see what the trends are and, and what's been happening with problem parking. Um, so I thought for those who don't know me, we'll do a little introduction. I'm Ruby, I'm the account executive at Snaps and Solve. Uh, we've got a few of our team on the call today as well, listening in. Uh, we've got our product specialists and our CEO and customer success manager, um, who will all be taking on board the feedback that you guys give through this presentation. So we'd like to keep it nice and interactive. You're welcome to unmute and um, um, participate vocally. I'd love to keep this as an open discussion with your feedback. Um, you can also put questions into the chat or feedback in the chat as well. Um, but I thought to kick off, it would be really interesting to look at some of the numbers around problem parking. Uh, so 14% of the reports coming through Snaps and Solve are related to issues with parking and cars. So it is the second most popular incident type that is reported through the app. Uh, and just last year, in the last calendar year, there were eight, over 80,000 reports sent through for illegal parking. Average customer satisfaction score uh, when someone reports an illegal parking request is at 3.1 out of five. And normally we see the average around that four out of five for reports in general across the app. So it is lower than the average. Um, so we do think there's room for improvement in the process. And that's why we wanted to have this discussion with you today open up and get that feedback around how we can improve it because obviously Australians and New Zealanders are using SnapSense of report parking, it's a bugbear for them and something that we can um, improve on. So we've got our um, different channels that people use to report illegal parking. Uh, so obviously we know the phone is a big channel, Snaps and Solve is a big channel, but curious to understand if there are other channels that people are reporting problem parking on, whether that's in person and people are coming into customer service counters or stopping staff on the street if they're seeing a council worker um, and, and reporting issues with parking or via email or web forms, what are the high channels that you're seeing for illegal parking that come into your councils? Uh, we see mainly web forms and emails. Yep. Anyone else? Hi, Taylor from Christchurch City Council. Um, we would mainly have phone calls coming through, but we also have face-to-face um, -face interactions and emails as well. But majority of our parking is over the phone. Yep. And do you have a preference? Is phone the preferred channel or is web form the preferred channel? For us, um, currently phone is the preferred channel, so we can call through to our team straight away to send someone out. Um, if we get a snap send soul, it might be that we, um, or an email through, it might be too late by the time we receive that, um, the car might not be there anymore. Yeah. Are people, is anyone monitoring your emails over the weekend? Because no one is for us, so they wouldn't be even acknowledged. Mm. Of course, yep, for us, we um, have someone monitoring them 24 seven, but our time frame on them is six hours. So it could still be too late by the time it mm. gets answered. Wow. Is anyone seeing um, trends of people coming into customer service centers to report issues with parking? Shame is from Sony. No. Yeah, we see a few because we've got car parks around us. Um, but like the others were saying, we get a lot through the phone uh, and email and, you know, often not preferred channel email because, again, we're not monitored over the weekend. Yeah. Okay. So curious to understand what information you're collecting um, and if it's different in particular from what comes through on a Snaps and Salt request or what you might be collecting through your web forms, through emails or through phone calls and what sort of information is crucial to being able to action a parking report? So people seem to think that we can enforce based on the photo that they sent us. So if we get it on Monday, we can still enforce from Saturday because they've sent us a photo that clearly shows an illegal parked vehicle. And um, we have to advise them that we can't enforce on that. The patrol has to attend and take their own photos. 
So Tanya, if someone calls you over the phone to report an issue with an illegally parked car, do you have a sort of set script of questions that you're asking them or you're just sort of setting the expectation with them that you'll do your best to get there? But Yeah, we, we log yeah. it in the system with the rego colour and, and make of car if they have it. If they have an exact address, then we don't say, well, you have to get the rego. Um, most people have it though. And yeah. then we call that through immediately to the patrol. Um, does that differ from anyone else's process? No. Same process for me. Okay. Same for me. So rego colour and make of car are most important, and that's obviously to be able to direct the officers to finding the right car. Yes. Yep. Fantastic. Um, in terms of images, if people are emailing or snaps and solving parking reports through to you, um, what type of images are helpful? Um, is it getting photos just of the car or is it, you know, further back, getting more context over where it's parked, if it's covering a driveway or if there's signage that says no standing, is it getting those points of interest in the image as well or is it not as important? For us, I guess we're really using Snap and Solve as a way to direct the report directly to the mobile patrol. So we don't even really need a photo. You know, Snap and Solve has given us the location, the, the category of illegal parking, and the and the contact details for the customer. So the patrol are just going to go there. It's handy to, to see the photo of a red, you know, hatchback parked yeah. over a driveway, mm -hmm. but they're going to attend anyway. So if but someone doesn't want to attach it. a photo, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. yeah. Is that the same for everyone else? Yeah, as long as the information that's been given is direct, so we actually know it's in that street at that number. But some of the reports we get are just, you know, you could be walking up and down the street all the time. So it just if they could give us an exact, if the information that's supplied is exact, you, we wouldn't need a photo. No. Okay. Um, in your experience, what do you think the customer's expectation is when they're, and this is across all channels, so more of a broader conversation, but if they're calling up to report a car that's parked across their driveway or um, something like that, what do you think their expectation is that's going to happen once they've made that phone call or they've sent you that email? Are they, do you feel that they're expecting to see an infringement notice on that vehicle or are they expecting just to see an officer come out or? I think a lot of times people are expecting the rangers to push the car out the way. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but I think most of it is they expect someone out there fairly pronto to put an infringement on it. Yeah, same as us. They're expecting immediate action and an infringement. Yeah. Um, and then what's what's the reality? I mean, how many of the reports that are being phoned through do you think you're actually able to get to and, and be able to issue an infringement or just attend at the very least? Uh, it's top priority for us for when it's illegal parking across the driveway, they'll tend someone immediately. Yeah. But again, it's only to just to issue an infringement. It's not to remove the car. Yeah. Does yeah, for us, I think um, there's um, we don't we don't meet the customer expectations. If the patrol is at the other end of the LGA, it might take time to get there, and and then the car's moved or whatever. But um, I think using Snap and Solve coming through on the phone makes them get there a bit quicker. But yeah, unfortunately, we often don't meet customer expectations. That's a challenge. Yeah, I'll second that one. I, I, I think I don't have any numbers on it, but I'm going to guess a lot of the time, by the time the ranger gets out there, the car's not there anymore. And, and do you see discrepancies in channels? Like if it's been phoned through, then we can get there, or if it's emailed through, we definitely can't, or is it is it sort of better for any channels, or it's just always a challenge based on workflow and, and where the ranges are and where the, the cars are? I mean, for I City of Swan at the moment, using Snaps and Solve, it goes directly into the work request system and directly as a priority to the officers. 
Yeah. Um, so for us, that's just as quick as reporting on the phone. But again, it depends on where they're located and where that is as to how quickly they can get there. So we've had really great feedback on Facebook, I think just on the weekend about, hey, I snaps and solve an officer was out there power got infringed. It was like three hour turnaround, which is fantastic. And then on the other side, we've gone, we reported 20 minutes ago, the car's now moved. Um, so I, you know, I think it's yeah partially dependent upon the person who's actually parked the vehicle illegally and whether or not they've just done it for a moment or whether it's something that they've been doing longer. So certainly if it's a long-term uh, illegal parking issue. So something that's regularly occurring with a certain vehicle or location, we definitely have much greater success and customer satisfaction because we've got more time to be able to get there and deal with it. Um, but certainly when it's just a quick, they've gone in and left, it's very difficult then to explain that to the customer about why we don't necessarily have a roving patrol that can be there any second to be able to to check that. So I think in part, it comes down to the customer behavior, whoever's yep. parking that vehicle and what, why they're parking it there or not. Definitely. Um, is, is there any, you know, world or a change that we can make where you would be able to infringe based on a snapper's photos? Um, an example being that we can include a watermark of the date and time stamp onto the photo. Um, to give you a bit more uh, that's not a council decision that would be um rms i guess it would yeah. be across the board for all councils yeah it would be legislative yeah mm. and it's that the officer has to view it yeah view it. yeah they take they take their yeah. own photos because they it, it's basically about going to court yeah so our, our photos have to be able to be presented in court and and at the moment civil photos cannot Okay. The only way that we've seen it done, possibly using that as an indication would be if there was CCTV infrastructure in that area that was managed by city staff that could validate that customer's information and details based on location. So the city of Perth, for example, used to be able to infringe a taxi in the wrong space or a car in the wrong space using CCTV infrastructure but that was quite rare and obviously more complicated to be able to do. Okay, interesting. Um, in terms of the reports that come through from Snaps and Solve, um, do you use, is, is the data and insights behind it, you know, being trends and hotspots and areas where you're getting more, is that something that teams are looking at to then alter the patrols or do you just have set patrols that you're doing? Is it reviewed every six months or quarterly or how does it sort of work from your side where you're working out what areas parking ranges are going to be in? That uh, is a very good of... question. <laughs> I think we need parking on this call. <laughs> yeah, for the city of Darwin, they're all on a roster. And is that roster of uh, locations that you're going to visit? It's, yes, the roster, part of the roster it is, is what areas you're, you are in. Yeah. Yeah, we're not, we're not currently doing any analytics on the snap sensor of illegal parking reports, which I know have those locations. That would actually be something that we should definitely look into. Is anyone else doing anything with data to sort of inform where you patrol? We've got the capabilities, but I don't think that we've gone that far yet to give them reports to the section so they can send ranges off to that particular point. They're just waiting on a complaint to come in or a request. Yeah, a bit more reactive. Okay. In the West, definitely too. Sorry, what was that? Is that Daniel? No. Yeah, yeah. In the West, definitely do um, that. So we pull a report. I don't know how often it is, a month or every couple of months, and then they reorganise their patrols to be in the hotspots based on the feedback we've been receiving from customers. Okay. And so are you pulling that from Tech One, or how are you pulling that information? We're pulling it from Tech One, but we're also we've got it specified if it's a, a phone call or a snap or an email. Yeah. And. Um, 
Cool. So you then look at those sort of trends and hotspots as to where it goes. Okay. Yep. Interesting. Um, I guess some things that we'd sort of, what we can do in the app, what we've been doing for other councils, um, just some case studies to show as examples, get feedback as to whether you think it's helpful, would improve the process. Um, this is an example of a information screen that we use with Frankston Council uh, in Victoria. Uh, they weren't able to make the call today to give their insights, but what they really wanted to do was set expectations around what's going to happen after a report's been sent. So um, for them, it was letting the users know that they don't infringe off the photo evidence, which seems to be the common misconception of the public. Um, so setting that expectation and just letting them know that if they do send a report, it will prompt further investigation. So it sort of sets the scene um, and gives a bit, bit more insight to the user. Um, any thoughts around whether this is helpful or whether it would be, you know, across the board helpful or not so much for your councils or... Hi, Ruby. I'll just jump in there. Sue from Sullen District Council in uh, just outside Cant in the Canterbury area. Hey, um, that would be really good, I think, as a snaps and solve tool. Now, going back to the analytics, we, we don't infringe on the snaps and solve reports, but what we do is generate a service request, retain all that information, mm -hmm. and then we send warning letters. Now, that those warning letters are saved in our database. So that helps us build a picture of who re-offending so that if we do have the parking officers go out and they do identify the same vehicle at a later time and a physical infringement is issued, that the snaps themselves add weight to any appeal that they might put in. Um, and I think the public are quite comfortable with that. So I think um, some sort of notification saying we don't infringe directly off photo evidence. However, this helps us build our intelligence on offending vehicles or something like that would be quite good for the public. Yeah, fantastic. Is anyone else doing um, warning letters? No. Interesting. Um, yeah, the warning, the warning letters do work and the snaps and top solve does help because the, the public feel that what they're doing is being addressed. Now, we analyse the impact on a popular hotspot by issuing warning letters. Of, of every weekend we went out there and then followed up with these warnings and it dropped off by about 80% of the offending, so they do help. Wow, that's really interesting insight. Uh, another um, in-app customization that we can do, and um, this is one that we did with Stonington, and I'm not sure if uh, we've got some of our Stonington team on the call today, um, but Stonington have a call screen set up. So this can go through to their parking team and it's outsourced. So um, that goes through to their company that look after parking requests and they call through and uh, report the issue through the, the phone. And that's working really well, Ruby. Um, reason I can't answer many of your other questions is because they're triaged straight to the third party. And do you ever get feedback, Fiona, from residents or the third party about the calls that are coming through or anything like that? Uh, yeah, we'll get follow-up from um, the residents when they've made um, inquiries. And, yeah, we just um, go through. So we don't know much about, you know, the data behind um, all of that. Yep. that. That would be more with our parking services team. And is anyone else outsourcing their parking or? No. Quite unique then, there you go, interesting. Uh, Waverley Council with Tanya on the call today, uh, we've set up our SMS alerts. So what happens is someone in Waverley sends a illegally parked vehicle request through Snaps and Solve and the parking team receive an SMS notification. They can click on the link in the text message and then they can view the location details, images and work out the appropriate action to take. So um, Tanya, do you want to speak to how that's working for your team or <laughs> you've had? Yeah, um, I have to say, we used to have that um, screen that said, please phone us to report this. And it wasn't very effective. People sent us snaps over the weekend and we got them at 8.30 on Monday and could basically do nothing with them. Um, I mean, I think we just basically ignored them. <laughs> Um, or no, we, we just wrote back and said, is the car still there? Because it was all parking at the driveway stuff. So we um, upgraded 
to this um, sending it through to directly to the patrol because it was a really poor service to, for, for us not to be, not to mention also impact on our um, revenue, not to be able to assist those people over the weekend. Um, and even when they call the after hours service, the after hours service doesn't patch them through to the patrol, they take the details and the after hours service calls the patrol. And it's it's just, we're really plugging Snaps and Solve for illegal parking. And we're really trying to deter people to not email us about illegal parking because again, it's not it's not um, actioned immediately. Um, so we've only got it for this one category at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a bit unprepared. I don't have any kind of figures around reports um, over the weekend and out of hours, but it is it is working really well. And the patrol like it because they have all the information, including the photo, the exact location and all that type of thing. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Elise, I think we've got on the call from City of Swan and um, maybe some others from your team around um, promoting illegal parking through the app and um, promoting it on social media and this image is looking a bit blurred on my screen hopefully it's coming through better for you guys um, or hopefully it loads soon um, but yeah keen to hear your feedback Elise around the process for your teams and um, why you choose to promote it on social media to report issues through Snaps and Solve and how it's been working for you. Yes, yeah, so um, Snaps and Solve has been massively beneficial for City of Swan primarily because we've got a really um, young demographic who are expecting digital solutions, but we never offered them the capability to be able to use them. So we relied really heavily on face-to-face -face phone and email. Um, and phone, not so much, but email and face-to-face -face was becoming really complicated to be able to action things quite um, effectively and immediately, which is what the customers were expecting. So Snaps and Solve kind of came about about a year ago and we were getting maybe, you know, 50, 60 requests a month, went to 300. We're now at nearly a thousand um, because we've started pushing out on social media and our satisfaction levels are increasing across the board. So not just via the app, but our customer satisfaction, our NPS and our customer effort, because people are going, it's just really easy for us to do it now. And because we've got Snaps and Solve integrated into our CRM, we don't have to see those reports. We don't have to manually action. The agent um, doesn't even need to know what's going on. So the customer reports, it goes straight into the system, gets workflowed immediately to the team 24-7. So as soon as they get it, they're able to action it. And then we've got automated closeout progress and completion emails to the customer. Um, so they never really have to follow up anything or check in with us about what's going on. And if you can, I don't, you can't see the number there, but that parking post had the most comments um, and likes that we've had on a city of Swan post for at least the last 12 months. And that goes for every time we post anything about Snaps and Solve, it gets a lot of traction um, and a lot of feedback from the community, which is great. Um, and I think too, we've been doing like before and afters. So people are able to see the effectiveness of what they're doing. Um, but parking's gone up on its own since that post 263% wow. in terms of reported um, parking or legal parking issues. And so um, would you say been... that the majority of your reports for parking are coming through now Snaps and Solve or is it, what's the split between phone and Snaps and Solve? I certainly um, over the last couple of months, Snaps and Solve has completely taken over other channels in regards to reporting illegal parking. And I would expect that with these posts, it would become more and more. So the community had certainly said, we've reported before, nobody cared, so we stopped. And so we're hoping those people come back on board and give us more data. We've actually got some customers, uh, customer X will call him, and he's lodged about 93 a month. And he walks the streets with our parking local laws and snaps everybody. Um, and so, yes, you know, before it was all emails and that was an, a manual email response, a manual work request. And it cost the city about $5,000 worth of time to action them. Now it's just about going out and assessing. So it's reduced the admin time, reduced that office's time, but also received a better outcome for the customer. So it's definitely made it easier but we're getting a lot better data around what's happening in what areas. And so we can also target streets and neighborhoods, which is what we're doing with the data 
to educate them, particularly if they've got parking related issues, and then feeding that back into the budget and council process to educate them as well about that. Fantastic. And so just um, to dig into a bit more of that process, so a community member sees an illegally parked vehicle, they take a photo of it, send it through Steps and Solve, it feeds directly into Pathway for you, and then your offices are just going through Pathway like they would normal workflow? Yes. So the benefit is like if a customer is reporting over the weekend um, and we don't have customer experience stuff on the ground as yet, the offices are still getting it. So we don't have that Friday to Monday delay anymore. We don't have the manual intervention by an officer even during business hours to have a look at it. It's just going straight into the system, straight into the workflow allocation for the team or the officer. And they're just able, if they're out in the field, to get that and go straight to it. So it's cutting down the touch points to get to the appropriate person to action, which is why we're getting feedback that goes, we snapped a couple of hours later, you've dealt with it. So we're really cutting down the need for us to manually intervene. And then we're also cutting out the need for us to update the customer because the platform is doing all of that for us. Mm. So it's the officer is now opened, you know, your snap, it's in progress, they're on their way, it's completed. So it's also setting the expectation after they've reported about what's happening. So if they can see that the whole process by the city took four hours, even if the vehicle isn't there and they're not infringed, they at least saw what we were doing um, and so felt comfortable that even though it might not have resulted this time, we were still actioning in a really quick time frame what they expected. So I think that's reduced the complaints about expectation and that you should be immediate because they're getting that update immediately from us. Yeah, I think the full transparency in the um, reporting back to the, the customer is really important and, and it plays a big part in that customer satisfaction piece as well. Totally. And it's scary because obviously then you're putting a lot of accountability and transparency on the team, but also means we're setting expectations. So if we realise that we're not getting things done as quickly, we can then question, do we have enough staff allocated? Do we have them allocated in the right spot? So then it can help educate the business on maybe where we need to move FTE or move hours rather than just assuming that the customer has an unrealistic expectation or maybe we do. So it's using data to help inform maybe why it's not working, which is definitely beneficial for the team on the ground. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing, Elise. Did anyone have any questions for Elise? Might jump to um, City of Port Phillip. I think we've got Sebastian on the call today. Um, City of Port Phillip, similar to City of Swan, have a two-way integration. Uh, theirs is with Technology One, and this is an example that I've pulled out from the timeline view in the portal where you can see um, the resolution text has gone back and, and let the snapper know that the parking office has issued an infringement. Uh, and then their, the happy community members left a five-star rating for City of Port Phillip. Love to hear a bit more about your experience, um, Sebastian, with the parking reports coming through. Do we have uh, Sebastian on the call? Maybe he wasn't able to make it. Melanie, do you know if Sebastian was able to come? Maybe, sorry. Can you hear us? Yeah, sorry. I have a Sebastian of the microphone issue. Sorry. That's <laughs> my fault. <laughs> No, so at, at the moment we're getting about 30% of our legally parked vehicles are coming via Snaps and Sol. It's giving officers the opportunity, those um, that integration through Snaps and Sol is going directly to the text message via text one out to the officer who's being assigned that request and then they're, they're basically attending within, within the hour, um, depending on workload and staff that we have on. Um, but no one, we will be getting to all those requests. Our only um, issue at the moment is on the weekend. Uh, we won't have the requests will be actioned. It's just not being closed off until that Monday morning when office staff come in and go into the actual request itself and close it. Mm -hmm. um, and our, our only thing there is that we're looking at building into um, our after hours program to have the option to close it out for the officer who does attend on that weekend instead of having to wait till Monday. But it's we're finding that the, the percentage of snaps and is increasing with those illegally parked and it's giving 
residents and customers, whoever's in the, the municipality, the, the option to get straight through to will log their request straight away with a photo um, so that we can then go out instead of having to wait on, on hold. Um, the other thing that we, the, the messaging on closure is also um, fully automated as well. So when the officer clicks, um, basically the officer has um, the request and they click, I issued three infringements, I issued seven infringements, I couldn't find a vehicle. And then depending on what they choose for that closure is what we send out to the customer automatically. So they're getting that pretty much within 15 minutes yeah. or so of the officer attending. Um, and we also update the stage based on, um, I guess, when we sign it to the officer and when the officer is going out there. Um, so, yeah, we love it. Fantastic. And um, sorry, I just want to dig back into when you said um, the officer receives an SMS from your system. So Tech One sends an SMS to the officer that's working in that particular location, or is it sending it to all officers, or how does that work? Oh, okay. so on the weekend, it will be a, we have a after hours phone that receives those text messages during the week when there's staff, so we have team leaders in the office. It will just come through to us. We then assign it to an officer and we receive a telephone message. So if they're working in the area of South Melbourne, for example, and we have a request come through from the Wheelie Park vehicle, we would assign it through Tech One to them and they would then receive a text message with a link or if this happens to be or whatever, it'll run through our, through our resource pool and they'll be able to see the tasks, the photos, any attachments or notes that have been added by the customer and then be able to close out with one of those drop down menus of six pins issued or they have an option for additional outcome identified where they can then write in the box what's actually taken place. Um, it may be that one vehicle was towed and then we would then respond to that customer saying this is what's taking place of the officer's notes. Fantastic. So I'm curious to understand um, from everyone about whether there are any channels that are getting better experiences than others. Um, I think obviously we've spoken about some case studies here with integration, which seems to get a really great response, but is there um, any other way that you have Python reports coming through to you that gives a great customer experience? Seems like, oh, Nikki, maybe? Um, well, I love the idea of interact, uh, it all integrating. That would be the dream and we don't have that. So I don't know if there's anyone else on the call that's in that same situation. Um, one of the things that we implemented probably 12, 24 months ago is where the Snap Send Soul notification actually goes to our Oracle after hours. Um, and then they will call through. So we use a third party to do our parking uh, infringements. Um, and so then they will call it through. So we still get the notification coming through. It still registers into our system, but the actioning um, is all being done through our um, third party after hours provider that will take them through during the day as well um, and through weekends. So it covers that 24 seven timeframe. So I just thought I'd share that if that helps anybody. Thank you. Are there any matters with parking that do need to be referred to the police and things that you can't action? No, good. Is that question to me or is it oh, to everybody? Really? <laughs> Yeah, Ruby, I'm happy to answer that one. So there's, there's a few that we would have to escalate to police, whether it be um, it's stolen, we obviously can't do anything about that. It'd be being forwarded to Victoria Police. We also rely on them a lot in regards to if we get through an abandoned vehicle, for example, that's been snatched and sold, um, we would make inquiries with police to then see whether or not they have any interest in the vehicle that may not flag as stolen on big roads. Um, but they may have warrants out for that vehicle or be interested in where yep. it is for other police matters. So we try and share as much information with them as possible and it becomes quite helpful. We don't have to send an officer out for that. Um, yep. As it, if we've just received it, we can then just email the photo through from the Snap Sense old report and then we can work in conjunction to find out an outcome and then notify that customer if it's something that police are dealing with, we will then just throw it back to the customer saying, look, um, at this point, it's part of a police investigation. 
can also might be taking anything further and then it gets dealt with that way. Or alternatively, the police have no interest within all of our avenues. Yeah. Okay. Um, and electric vehicles, are you seeing uh, electric vehicle charging stations and parks? Are you seeing a rise in those reports coming through and how are you handling them? Anyone? <laughs> We only get reports that there are other vehicles parked in the EV spots and then we just infringe them, but we're not getting reports about electric vehicles as such. Okay. Um, and then just wanting to see if anyone has any dreams around or, you know, great ideas, suggestions around what we can do. Um, if we haven't already covered it today around what we can do to make things better or to enhance the reporting experience for the community and enhance your experience as solvers receiving these reports as well. Ruby, I was wondering if it was possible with the illegally parked vehicles when we have is a driveway being blocked and there's that little box, um, something that we don't tow vehicles unless the resident for that property is there. Oh, okay. um, so, for example, if we received if we received a request saying hi, my driveway is blocked by a snap sense toll, um, we wouldn't know if it needed to be towed or not. We'd just be sending an officer for an infringement. Yeah. Um, if it was possible to have like a pop up or something that came up saying does the vehicle need to be towed with a, a message to the snapper saying yeah. that if they wish the vehicle to be towed, the resident would need to be there at that time when officers attend. Okay. That's and being that it's a driveway block, we can be there pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, I'll leave my contact details on the screen. Um, feel free to reach out directly if you've got any questions, queries, anything further you wanted to discuss. But I think it's been a really great panel. It's been really great to discuss with you all and share the experience that uh, and the challenges that you're facing with illegal parking requests coming through. Obviously, it's a hot topic. And um, as we saw with uh, City of Swan's engagement that they get on social media when it comes to parking, it's a popular topic for the public as well. Um, so we're always keen to think about how we can improve the experience. So feel free to reach out if there's any thoughts that you come have later on and always happy to chat further. Appreciate you taking the time to chat today. Thank That's you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, all.